So moving on to the AFC, we've got the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC North. It was almost a given at that point that they were going to draft a linebacker with their first round selection. Uh, Patrick Queen, after Kenneth Murray was selected, this this ends up being the smart choice for uh, the Baltimore Ravens to go with linebacker. And then the uh, quote-unquote sexy pick for the Baltimore Ravens is the second round pick, number 55, J.K. Dobbins, the running back that they selected. So, hey, I mean, people are saying, why do you need a running back? You've got Mark Ingram. Like, it, it just it doesn't make any sense. you got Gus Edwards. Listen, you can never have too many running backs. The way that the running back position just comes and goes throughout the league, this is just added depth, and this is going to be uh, a good move for the Ravens. And I don't want to say it's just depth because they're going to use uh, Dobbins to his full potential. And I think Ingram, he's not going to be jealous. He's not going to be taken back from this. He's going to be like, all right, let's do this. Let's go. I did the same thing with Alvin Kamara. I shared touches with him, and that ended up being good for me in New Orleans. Let's do the same thing in Baltimore. We're we're a run-heavy team. The 71st pick that they got from the L.A. Chargers, Justin Matabuke, a defensive lineman, and then Devin Duvernay. I don't know if you guys were watching the draft. We were watching day two. And uh, they were showing John Harbaugh's reaction when they selected Devin Duvernay. He was so excited. He, he felt like he just got a steal. He got a diamond in the rough in Devin Duvernay because he's going to fit into that Baltimore Ravens offense so perfectly. So good job by the Ravens and their draft. Next, we've got the Cleveland Browns. So number 10 pick. I actually thought that this was going to be traded to the Philadelphia Eagles for the longest time. Because the, the Browns talked about trading back and acquiring more picks. But they ended up staying put and going with just sl- seven selections in the uh, NFL draft. And they selected Jedrick Wills, an offensive tackle. It's just interesting to note that a lot of playing time for Wills at Alabama wasn't necessarily at left tackle. It was at right tackle. Maybe he can make the adjustment or maybe Jack Conklin can move from one position or from one side to the other side. Uh, But either way, I think their thinking was Baker Mayfield was under a lot of pressure last year. And if you get two good bookends and Jack Conklin, which he signed to a five-year contract from Tennessee and Jedrick Wills, it's going to be a good move for that Cleveland offense. And then at number 44, they draft Grant Delpet, a defensive back from LSU, uh, who people touted him to be a first round talent and could have gone in the first round. So, You draft another LSU defensive back two years in a row with them drafting Greedy Williams last year. And now this is three straight years that you've drafted a defensive back in the first two rounds, with the first one being Denzel Ward and then Greedy Williams and now Grant Delpit. So their secondary is going to be looking decent, we hope, uh, for many years to come. Overall, they have addressed their needs with Jedrick Wills being the main pick that they needed. I think the Browns could have traded back if they really wanted to. Safe choice is to stay put, so I'm not going to be knocking on them for that. Um, So good job by the Cleveland Browns. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they have an act for this. They have an act for drafting wide receivers early on, and they end up up being good. And I feel like I could be wrong about this, but if history teaches us anything, Chase Claypool is going to be a good wide receiver for the Steelers. Maybe he's just good enough to replace Juju if he were to ever get hurt again. Maybe he's just good enough to bounce off of Juju and just be a good number two. Who knows? But the Steelers, like I said, historically, are just good at... Man, they they know talent when they see it. At wide receiver. And and Claypool could be another one of those guys. Alex Highsmith, the defensive end that they drafted uh, in the third round. Anthony McFarlane, a running back that they got. Now, I know everybody's saying like, oh, well, you got Benny Snell last year. You got Edmonds. You have Connor. I get that. It's just a reoccurring theme on this podcast. I've been saying it with other teams. You can never have enough running back depth. So let's see how the Pittsburgh draft class is going to pan out. The Cincinnati Bengals with the number one overall pick. This is kind of a given for the past few months. uh, Selecting Joe Burrow at quarterback. They definitely... Took their time doing it. I don't know why. Anyways, regardless of that, Joe Burrow is going to be the next quarterback at the Cincinnati Bengals. And then in the second round, you got him help. T. Higgins, wide receiver. 
the last time the Bengals got a quarterback and a wide receiver in the first two rounds were in 2011. A.J. Green and Andy Dalton. And that ended up being a good combo right there. So for Burrow and Higgins, this ends up being um, the, the future for the Bengals. Let's see how they're going to perform. Uh, but both players playing in that national championship, Burrow for LSU, Higgins for Clemson, a good quarterback wide receiver combo could be the best for years to come. Logan Wilson, a linebacker that they drafted in the third round, and then he got another linebacker in the fourth round, and then some other defensive line uh, and linebacker help. Uh, and then on top of that, offensive line in the sixth round, shout out to Hakeem Adeniji of Day One Sports and Entertainment. We had the privilege of um, following Adeniji and his uh, path to the NFL Combine. So if you go back to our YouTube channel and you search uh, Journey to the NFL Combine, you'll find this documentary that we made. And uh, thank you to Derek Gilmore for giving us that that access. And congratulations, Hakeem, for um, getting selected by the Bengals. It's great working with you. You're, you're a good guy. Um, and, and it's hope for nothing but the success, nothing but success uh, in Cincinnati.